I'm going to call on uh, Monsieur Drubini to uh, join us and to uh, comment on the uh, policy recommendations uh, as he's had an opportunity to read. And, any and he's also going to give us an update on um, European his view on European funding prospects from 2014 onwards. Can you have some, some light? I'm afraid you are sleeping. So <laughs> can you have more, more light? So uh, it's clear listening to claim or to, to Lisbon that except uh, the president of our commission, uh, Mr. Barroso, uh, nobody is able to answer to, to their recommendation because they have a holistic view of all the different policies of the European Union and there are many. And I'm certainly not in the position of, because of my source of, of knowledge, certainly not in position to, to answer to your uh, global recommendation. So, uh, but I'm not joking, those are very important. It's very important to have done that, done them. And they are, they, it is very important that you disseminate this recommendation. So. As I understood, uh, it is still a draft. It's going to be uh, fixed uh, very quickly. Uh, but it's very important that you disseminate uh, this. Some ideas. Uh, as you, you all know, uh, European policy is made not only by the Commission, but by mem member states and by the Parliament. They have different actors in a very complex institu institutional game. And at this moment, this, this, will, uh, this very period, uh, starting the summer until uh, the end of the autumn, uh, there are quite tough discussions and uncertain discussions on what is going to be the cohesion policy within the strategy 2020 and within the cohesion policy what will be the place, the role given to cities? And it, it means, I, I come to that, just refer to that. Uh, it means that uh, you need to say what you think or to disseminate what you think first to your national government, to your managing authority at regional level, but to your national government, because they do participate uh, to intergovernmental meeting on what will be the next cohesion policy and the need to receive input from the ground. The need to receive input from cities telling them this works, this doesn't work, this should, could work much better if this can be take place. So uh, the first, first thing is to uh, <coughs> disseminate your recommendation to your different national uh, national uh, uh, national government, and also to the Commission, to the Parliament. If you know, uh, uh, and you know, of course, uh, some of uh, uh, Parliament uh, member of the uh, European Parliament from your country, send them the text. Try to have a rendezvous with them, and to explain to them. It's it's very important really uh, in this period that if you want that the, the urban issues are on the top of the agenda, uh, you put, we all, we, we, we all put. Uh, that's the first thing. And of course, uh, your back secretary will be very uh, pleased to, uh, to assist you, to support you, to disseminate your recommendation. Second observation, that's the first global observation. Second, global observation. So, at the moment, uh, when we uh, we uh, are in uh, European meetings, uh, we discuss a lot of desectorization or not working in silos. Uh, I suppose you understand my bad English, what the ID. So, how not to work, not to work uh, in sector uh, in, in sector in sectors. Second word, which, which is 
very much in the uh, multi-governance. So uh, if you are in Brussels, if you don't tell multi-governance in interest ten cantons, you are really uh, bad. So you have to put multi-governance everywhere. And third, it's very important for us, uh, there is an open question of area-based policies. And the discussion, so these three, uh, th these three, three words are very important to discussion. And we have to, we have to play, to play seriously uh, with them. Desectorization, and your batch is a very good catalyst for that. Because in your batch, at your level, at, le at the level of your city, we tell you, you should not work in silo. You should work together with the different sectorial departments of your municipality. And not only with the sectorial department of your municipality, but also with the civil society. And, and also with uh, private entrepreneurs and so on and so on. So desectorize. And you had the experience in repair. Uh, you had the experience that how much it is difficult to desectorize. To have a to, to, to leave a transversal policy, and as you know, it's also true at national level, and it's perfectly true at European level. So desectorization, you have you have made the experience. We ask you to make with our methodology this experience in repair with your project. But you know how difficult it is, and we know. Uh, we, have, we can have the impression that at European level, progress are very, very slow in this matter. And so that's why I was joking on, uh, on the expose of Louis. Uh, very few people within the Commission accept to have the holistic view of the different European policies. And that's really an issue. And it's important that people from the ground I consider that you are from the ground, I'm from the ground. Tell to the Commission, listen straight. You are giving counsel, advice, telling us you should be integrated and so on and so on. But why the European policy are not integrated? And what efforts can you prove to me that you are integrating your, your, your policy? And can you explain to me, can you explain to a mayor, can you explain to the head of a department in a city why it is impossible to work together with, with ESF and EADF? Why is it possible? Is it written in the Bible? Certainly not. It's just sectoral policies depending on di different direc directorates with institu institutional interest, and we have to fight against that, we have to fight against that, not because we want to fight, but for efficiency. We need to be efficient. We have so many problems that we need to be efficient, and we know that this way of sectorization is not efficient. So that's why I think we, we have to push. Same thing on multi-governance. We use very much multi-governance, and in your batch, tells you very clearly that uh, your ban issues are issues of multi-governance, because a municipality is working with very different actors at this transversal level, and also different actors from regional level, or national level, or European level. And we have to find, and it is very difficult, a combination of all these actors. That is multi-governance, and we have to improve. We have to accept the idea that we are not living alone our policy, because when I, if I am a mayor, uh, I know that I'm depending of the national regulation, of the EU regulation, of the uh, regional funding, and so on. So I must admit this, but I must build a, a multi-governance way of managing my policy. And we have to improve, and I think uh, we, we, we should push to improve it. Third thing, third word, the area-based area based policy. Uh, in the discussion, I, 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 I'm al allowed to follow. It appears clearly that everybody agrees on the idea of deprivable 
of AR-based telescope refined neighborhoods. It's much more complex at the city level or at the functional area level, uh, urban functional area level. So and that on this point, I think that the opinion of cities, and cities are elected people, uh, civil servants, people working at local level, uh, the pressure you can you, you can you can put on policy makers at the urban level is very important. So that so these are the reflections I wanted to to to, uh, to, to, to tell you, not to answer uh, point by point on strategic contingencies. What you say is very interesting. It must be read quietly, uh, and. Um, and decision-maker and discuss. 